All right, my guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Something a little different today on the channel just because the fact that uh, I'm in studio. I'm going to talk to you guys today about a 10-step guide to starting a dumpster rental company. I get a lot of messages. I, I see a lot of comments. It's one of the top things I get asked is, how do I go about starting dumpsters? It, is there a step-by-step? -step? So I'm going to share that with you guys today. First of all, though, I'm going to have Casey roll the intro. Casey, hit that, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the 10 steps to get a dumpster rental company started. inspiration behind this particular episode is more, I know a lot of you guys are already in business, but there's, I feel an equal amount of people, at least based on the messages, the DMs, the phone calls, the different things that I get. There's an equal amount of people that watch my channel, listen to my podcast that aren't in business yet. They're thinking about getting into dumpsters. They're just about to get into dumpsters. So I'm just, I'm going to share with you 10 steps. I'm, I'm going to break it down for you. This has a little bit of a disclaimer. Guys, there's hundreds of things to do to start a business. I'm going to give you a really good blueprint of what it takes, but obviously I'm not going to be able to touch on every little thing that you have to do. But if you want a 95% look at a really good picture, what it's going to take. Not only that, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down in order of how you should do it. I think far too many times guys go out and buy a truck, they buy a trailer, they buy three bins, and then they try and, okay, now I'm going to get in business. And in my opinion, it's completely backwards. And you'll see by my list and the steps that I do, Buying the truck and buying your your bins and your roll-offs is the last step in the process. So with that being said, let's get started. Number one, the number one thing I think that you should do when you're thinking about getting in business is choose your location. That starts everything. Before you come up with a name, before you do anything, you need to start a you need to have a location. Some of you run these out of your, your homes. You run them out of your, you know, your ranch. Uh, you might have another business. You need to figure out where you're going to use an address for your business. This literally starts everything that I'm going to talk about. And if you don't have a location picked out, you're going to see that you're going to get a couple steps into the process and you're going to get held up and you're going to have to go all the way back to the step. Anyway, just figure it out in the first place. It matters for permits. It matters for Google, my business. It matters for insurance. It matters for business licensing. It matters for everything. Choose your location. Step number one. Coming in at step number two, name your business. You need to come up with a name that represents you, that is, gonna, is going to Google well, people are going to remember. But more importantly, you need to come up with a name that is available with your state department, with your local city, that hasn't been taken, that doesn't have registration, that doesn't have any trademark infringements on it. So when you come up with your name, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your local city, your state, and you're going to try and register that name. That's going to tell you if the name is available. And sometimes, guys, at least I know in the state of Utah, if I choose a name that's similar to another name, the state might deny it because they say it's too similar to another name that they already have in the database. You need to choose your name. But besides doing just going to the state, go to all the social media platforms and see if you can make your name work. Is that name available? 
If, if you're going to be Utah Disposal, does that name work for the State Department? Yeah. Okay. Can I get that name on Instagram or very close to it? Can I get that name on TikTok? Can I get it on YouTube? Can I get it on Facebook? Can I get this name on all the platforms I want to get it on so that the name recognition is the exact same on every platform? So choosing the name, there is a lot that goes into it. But once you get your name chosen, you figured it out on all the different platforms, then you go to the State Department and you make sure that name's available and you're going to want to register that name. But one of the first questions they're going to ask you is, what's your address? That's why we have the address at step one. So now you got an address, you got your name, you can put it in there and you can start that process. Guys, once you get once you get your name registered with the state, you got it on all your platforms, you guys are gonna need to file for an EIN number. This is your federal tax ID number. It's usually an 82 dash number, an 87 dash number, an 86 dash number. They got a couple different vari variations of it these days, but you're gonna wanna file get your EIN. You're also going to want to file with the city to get your sales tax if it's applicable to you. Again, guys, this is all things, just basic housekeeping paperwork. You're going to want to get your insurance in place. You're going to want to get uh, any permits that the city has. Maybe a state requires a license, a city requires a license, maybe a county or parish that you're in requires a license. So there's a lot that goes into that just kind of getting your name ready with the EIN, the sales tax, just making sure that you're all put together. Step number two is a, it's a very crowded, there's a lot to do in step number two. There's a lot of stuff I haven't mentioned, but I'm just, I'm, I'm giving you a really good foundation blueprint of what it takes. That's all wrapped up in number two. At number three, guys, you need to figure out how you're going to do business. You need to set up a bank account at this point. This is step number three. You got to set up a bank account in your business name. You need to figure out how are we going to take payment? Are we going to process credit cards? Are we going to take PayPal? Are we going to take Apple Cash? Are we going to take Venmo? Are we going to take checks? Are we going to take cash app. What are we going to take? I'm a big fan of taking it all, but this is the step at step three. You need to start setting up your banking, what we call your POS, your point of sale. You need to start getting all this together because there's verification processes. There's things that take time. Um, you got to get your bank account set up. You need to know at step three, how are we doing business? How are we taking the customer's money and converting it into our money and getting it into our bank account? This is something I think people think far too late in the process and it really gives them a headache. And then what happens is, and for you guys that are in business too, that are listening to this and you're already in business, this is where you guys are getting tripped up because you don't offer all your payments because you started really fast, maybe you offered Square, maybe you offered Vemo, and you haven't come back to readdress your payment, and you're really limiting. When we did the One Quick Away episodes, most everybody was really, really limited on the amount of payment choices that they're giving the client. So for you guys that are established, here's your sign that you need to go back and you need to get all the payment processing that you want to give your client and do a little what I'm going to call digital housekeeping and get that in order. For you guys thinking about starting up, step three, get your bank account in order for your business. Get your payment processing in order. Figure out how your process works to get the money.
Guys, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a three point one right here. This is also the step you guys need to figure out your booking, your reservation, and how you're gonna schedule dumpsters. I know there's some platforms out there like DRS, like Docket. If you want to try and do one-stop shopping, I'm not a fan of that, but that's not what this episode is about. 3.1, because it's a big section, you need to figure out how are you going to let your customers make reservations? How are you going to, on the back end, run your dumpsters? What I mean by that is how are you going to keep track of them? How are you going to know where your dumpsters are? Um, you also need to figure out scheduling for your clients. Again, guys, these are some big group areas, so I'm trying to really keep it as minimal as possible but still give you the information that you need to be successful. So that's 3.1, scheduling, reservations, and how am I keeping track of my dumpsters on the backside? All right, number four, and this is something I see guys that are still in business that aren't doing. Number four, have your pricing, have your sizes, have how many days you're going to rent it out for. I want you to go as far as having your contracts written at step four. So you need to know all the dumpsters you're going to offer, all the different sizes. Are you going to rent one day, three day, seven day? Hell, I talked to somebody in Miami the other day that all they do is 17 day rentals. Um, Whatever you're going to do, step number four is where you need to figure out how much you're going to rent the dumpster for, how much it rents for for the different days. Are you including tonnage? Are you not? Is it an add-on? Are you giving them anything on the rental plus? Are you giving them driveway protection? Are you giving them cancellation insurance? You need to have your contracts written. This is the step, step four. I know there's a big chunk of people that have been in business for a while and are in business right now that still haven't done this properly. You guys, a lot of guys make the mistake. They go out, they buy the equipment, then they jump on Facebook. How much should I rent it for? It's absolutely crazy. And it's a death march in today's economy. If you haven't planned through this a little bit more. Don't just be another victim in six months throwing up a post. You had a better opportunity, so you're selling all your shit. I don't care what your excuse is. You're selling it because it's not doing as good as you thought it was. There's not an opportunity that comes up that's better than this because you chose to get into it. So when you're selling your stuff off and you're going to go do something else, it's because you didn't follow a, a, a good recipe or you didn't have a good plan. That's what this episode's all about, giving you guys a step-by-step -step plan. Number four, pricing. Re uh, know how many days you're going to rent out for. Know the prices you're going to rent them out for. Get your contracts in place. Have it all done in step four. All right, step number five. You're going to start a Google My Business listing. And this is where a lot of guys get tripped up. You're going to do this at step five because you have to get verified by Google. What do you need to get verified by Google? An address. Number one thing that we talked about, first step, get an address. Can you see how important this address is? It has played a role in every step so far from getting a bank account to anything else. Google My, Google My Business is going to send you a verification card by snail mail, the USPS. And they send you a postcard. And that's how you're going to get verified. You, you need to open a Google My Business. You need to get verified. And that starts the process of getting you on Google. Okay, but this takes some time. Get it done at step five. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to start all your social media accounts. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, whatever else, TikTok, anything that you want to be on. You're going to get your account set up. You're going to get your profile pick in. You're going to talk about your business in your bio, and you're going to start getting active. I know what you guys are saying. I don't even have any dumpsters yet. What do you want me to do? Figure it out. Create content. 
get some you need to start getting active start commenting on other pages start watching other stuff don't be watching them from your personal page watch them from your business page okay but at step five after you do the google my business and you get that process started now you're going to start getting all of your social media accounts up running and start getting them active i'm going to give you guys a 5.1 I know I did this back at three. I'm going to do it again. 5.1. In step five is when you launch your website. The, the reason you need to launch your website at step five, Google, once they get you verified, after you're verified, it takes them 30 to 45 days to crawl your website to even start to recognize that you're in business. 30 to 45 days, it's called a Google crawl. Okay, think about that, it's a month and a half. I know guys that are starting in business that don't even have websites. Again, I said it earlier, it's a death march. Okay, step 5.1, you need to get your website up, you need to have your pricing on it, you need to make it, you are in business. You need to get going. I know what you guys are going to say. Holy shit, John, what if I get a rental? Don't worry, I'm getting there. But you need to get your website up by, five, by step 5.1, up and running, so Google can work its magic, perform its crawl, because it's going to take 45 days to even recognize that you're on the internet. All right, step number six. This is where I want you guys to network. I want you to find at least two, preferably three or four guys in your immediate area that run the equipment you are planning on buying. I'll give you an example. If you're going to start the game on a bumper pole or gooseneck, PJ, Max D, Texas Pride, whatever trailer and you're going to pull it with your pickup, you need to find a minimum of two guys that you can network with and you can reach out to. I mean, not just, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm running trailers. Like, bro, let me take you to lunch. Let me take you to breakfast. Let me take you to dinner. Let me ride with you in your truck for a week. Hey, how much will you charge me to ride with you? Make the commitment. You need... A minimum of two guys that run the same equipment that you're planning on buying. If you're planning on buying a hook lift truck, don't go ride with a guy in a trailer. If you're going to buy a trailer, don't waste your time with a guy on a hook truck or a cable. You need guys with the same equipment you're thinking about buying. You need to network. You need to become their best friend. Okay? Okay. You get where I'm going with this? These are the guys you're going to flip work to if you happen to get your website to catch an order or you get an order, you're going to give the work to these guys while you're waiting for your equipment, okay? They're also the guys that you're going to give overload work to. These are also the guys that are going to help you when your truck breaks down, when your trailer breaks down, when your dumpsters break down. I have several guys like this that I work with in my market. We work really, really well together. You, this is, I cannot stress the importance of this. And if you're like, man, the closest guy is 60 miles away because I live out in the middle of Texas, great. Drive the 60 miles, okay? Take him to dinner, take him to breakfast, whatever it takes, because you will need him. You will need him. This is a big step that guys don't do until they're in trouble. And when you're in trouble, it's too late. Okay? Network. It's good business practice. Okay? Keep, you guys can keep all the work amongst yourselves. Think of it as like a little mini co-op like farmers have. Everybody can contribute a little bit. Okay, and if a guy says, nope, I don't even want to meet with you, I don't have any, good, go find someone else. You need, you need, I can't stress this enough, you need to have this network. Minimum of two guys, preferably three or four.
Number seven, you're going to start advertising. Have you guys noticed we're on number seven and we haven't even talked about equipment yet? Not a truck, not a hook truck, not a dumpster. There's a lot that goes into it, guys, if you want to do it and you want to be successful at it. Number seven, you're going to start your marketing. You're going to start with door hangers. You're going to start with telephone poles. Hell, you can start with Google Ads if you want. You're going to start with Facebook Marketplace. You're going to start in your town. You're going to just put up junk removal signs, real estate signs, whatever you want to call them in the yard. But you are going to start marketing at step seven. You need to get your name out there. You need to tell your story. More than just posting a dumpster, which, mind you, you don't have yet. Posting a dumpster on Instagram, we got dumpsters available call. It doesn't get anyone's attention, okay? You need to start talking to contractors, talking to landscapers, getting involved in home improvement groups. Whatever it is that you want to market, whatever you think it's going to take, number seven, you need to start your marketing plan and you need to be out there pushing your dumpsters like you got 40 of them in the yard, okay? I'm serious about this, guys. This is the point that you start marketing, getting your name out there, and getting embedded in your community as somebody they know, they like, and they trust. 7.1. In the event that you do get a rental, give it to one of the guys you met in step six. If you start getting rentals from your website or referrals from family, friends, coworkers, whatever it is, remember the guys I told you to network with in step six that run the same equipment as you? Give them the work. Give them the work. Okay? You still own the relationship. You still own the buying experience. Give them the work. Make sure the customer's happy. Make sure the customer's taken care of. You can start to see the process. Hey, give the work to a guy you met in six and said, let me come right along with you. I want to watch the whole process. From how you communicate to when you get there, to how you drop it off, to how you pick it up, to how you bill it, everything. Let me watch the process. I'm going to give you this rental for free. I don't even want any money. I just want, I want the opportunity to learn what your process is. Guys, this whole episode... Yeah, it's a 10 step to getting started, but there's so much of this that you are figuring out your own process, how it works. Rather than just going to Facebook and asking somebody to solve your problem for you, that I'm trying to give you the tools to come up with your own process, what works for you. What works for me doesn't work for somebody 60 miles north of me. What works for me doesn't work for somebody three miles west of me. You know, you got to have your own process, okay? So 7.1, you get a rental out there, give it to a guy you met in six. Number eight, this is when you are going to go and start opening accounts with landfills, transfer stations, recyclers, landscapers, anybody that you're going to use to dispose of your product. You need to have their price list, price list memorized, their hours of operation memorized, what days they're open, what days they're closed, how much do they charge a ton, do they charge a one ton minimum regardless what you come in, do they have a four ton minimum. Um, hell, Kanani in uh, Hawaii told me a five ton minimum. Doesn't matter if you take a single couch in, they're going to charge you a five ton minimum. So this is the step at step eight. You're going to go out there and you're going to open accounts at the transfer station. You're going to open an account at the landfill. And if you guys are like, yeah, my landfill doesn't take accounts. It's just, I just pay the credit card. You're missing the point of the step. What hours are they open? You be know what days of the week, know what they charge tonnage. So when somebody calls you and they tell you what they're putting in the dumpster, you're immediately thinking, where am I going to get rid of this and what's it going to cost me? And and you get to the point, you, you can process that in a split second. I talked to somebody on the phone. One of the first questions I asked, and the first question I asked him is, 
what city am I delivering to? And the second question is, what type of project are you doing? What are you putting in the dumpster? And as soon as they start talking, I'm already thinking, I'm taking this to this recycle center. This is going to concrete. Shit, that's hard to get rid of. Where am I going to get rid of that? Oh, that's household. There's only one place that takes that. It's a higher tonnage. All this is going through my head Why the customer's telling me. If you don't know what every facility that you're going to go to charges and what their rates are and what their tonnages are, what their restrictions are, what their pro prohibited items are, this is the step. You need to learn all that. Number eight. You need to memorize every place that you're going to drop off and you need to have an agreement with them. Some of them make you come in and weigh your truck. Some of them want to put a special sticker on your truck. Whatever it is, you need to get contracts in place to get rid of your trash in step eight. Number nine. Now we're going to purchase your equipment. One of the very last steps in this whole process now you purchase your equipment you go out there if you're buying a trailer if you're buying a truck buying a hook truck buying bins this is when you this is when you buy your equipment now i'm not saying that you couldn't have ordered it earlier but you should at least be up to step nine and have a damn good idea what your margins are going to be, how much money you're going to make, what you're going to charge, where you're going to get rid of it, what kind of specialty market you're trying to carve out in your city. You need that that's the process that we've been going through all the way up until 9. 9, secure your equipment. And coming in at 10, the last step in the process, make your first rental. And as simple as that sounds, it's quite complicated. Just make your first rental. If you're going to go out there, you're going to make mistakes. You know, you got to come up with, I've talked this whole episode about your process. Do you text them before? Did they order online? Do they get more than a receipt online? Do they get a, what happens next? Hey, this is when we come out. Did they add some options like driveway protection, a tarp, cancellation insurance? What's your process? And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, my process is constantly evolving, constantly evolving, daily, weekly, I'm changing how I do business. They're little tiny movements. I explain it like this. If I'm going to take a cruise from California to Hawaii, and when I'm in California, I'm going to dial in the coordinates for Hawaii into my boat, into my ship, into my vessel. Okay? But once I start sailing, if I don't ever touch those again, I'm going to sail right by Hawaii and never even see it. There's wind speed. There's water current. There's all sorts of weather. There's different things like that. You're constantly making little adjustments to make sure you keep your target on. It's the same thing in business. If you guys think you get through these 10 steps and you're on your way, you're misled. It's constant change. And I change things based on clients buying behavior, based on problems, based on wording that I had or didn't had, based on new features that come out with technology, new ways to pay, new ways to book. I do it based on uh, demand, different things that I see. It's a constant evolving thing. So guys, you got to remember, this is a real good blueprint for those of you guys that can't find, man, what are the steps to get in business? Like I, I'm sure it's not just going out and buying a dumpster. Don't make that mistake, guys. Too many guys buy the equipment first thing, come up with some cheeky, cute, clever name, and they think they're in business. If you go through these steps, you're going to have such a higher chance of being successful because you're thinking through things and you're not going to get caught flat-footed without thinking through all these things. But look, guys, we get in business because we want to work for ourselves. We enjoy it. And it can be very, very enjoyable. But sometimes we just don't know. And unfortunately, we're in a little bit of an industry 
where people that do know don't want to share. You'll never find that on my channel. My channel is about full transparency. I, I want to share that information with you. I catch a little bit of backlash for it that maybe I'm sharing too much information. But guys, it's my channel and I want to share because at some point somebody shared with me and at some point everyone has to have a helping hand. Guys, there's no secrets in this business, at least not from me. If you want to know something, drop a comment. I'll tell you. If you want it, if you want me to do an episode or a podcast on something that you can't find information on anywhere in this industry, drop a comment. I'll do an episode. I'll do a podcast on it. That's where I get most of my ideas, guys. I'll be honest with you. Most of my content ideas come from interaction that I have with guys like you. They call me, they DM me, they, they're in Instagram, they message out to me, they drop a comment. That's where I get these ideas. That lets me know, hey, there's a need here. Guys are trying to find this information, they can't find it. You want to know anything about dumpsters? I'm not saying I know everything. But if you want to know anything, drop a comment down below and I will do my damn best to put together a high quality honest straightforward episode and answer those questions for you but guys i appreciate you uh, i do want to recognize gladiator cargo nets new sponsor of our channel we appreciate them these guys made some some incredible products guys we use their cargo nets for our dirt concrete and sod dumpsters as you know the big truck tarps don't fit those concrete dumpsters in an efficient way. I found these guys a couple years ago. I'm still rocking on one of my trucks. The original cargo net I bought from them that I tarp concrete on on the daily with. So they got some great products. Check them out. If you're looking for an alternative way to tarp one of your difficult containers, like a concrete container, consider getting a cargo net. They work fantastic. But we appreciate their trust, their support, and uh, believe in what we're doing here on YouTube. Guys, I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, man, we're having a good time. Thanks again for all the comments. Everything that you guys do, your support is over the top, and I really appreciate it. But thanks again, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. We got some more stuff coming for you midweek. Don't forget to check out the podcast, Stay Loaded. It drops every Wednesday, 6 o'clock. You guys be safe out there. Don't forget, keep those trucks loaded. Keep those dumpsters loaded. And most importantly, keep those bank accounts loaded, guys. Drive safe. We'll see you next time.